I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for again being here at 7.30 in the morning. Um, start with the minutes from last meeting. Of, I was not at that meeting, so I would, as far as content, I think I only found one grammar mistake, but that's <laughs> that's okay. Content-wise, I would appreciate if somebody who was here could speak to that. And uh, I move that we approve the January 27th minutes. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes pass. Yay. Okay, um, Chairman's report and other trustees report. I'd just like to say thank you to Liz for stepping in and taking over for me while I was while I was gone. She it's a tough always, <laughs> as always, does a a wonderful job. I sometimes wonder why you're not sitting here instead of me. <laughs> but thank you again. I really um, I really do appreciate that. Um, I also miss the open house, which I understand was a Wonderful success again, and, and thank you to all of the trustees who attended Open House and helped to show our support to the community there. I just wanted to uh, make a comment on you know community support and involvement within the community, and I this is something I'm going to bring up a, a little bit later in the meeting, bringing the three boards together for a joint meeting, but. I had the wonderful opportunity last week with my daughter and my daughter-in-law and my daughter-in-law's mom, we went and learned how to make dumplings wow. with, the, with the Chinese club and it was something that I had purchased at Delicious Destinations. And it just really, while I was there and met so many people from the community that I had not met before, as small of a town as this is, and as often as we say, we know everybody. <laughs> we really don't. And to have those opportunities and with the foundation and the trustees and the friends all working together like that and helping, helping each other out, we do, um, do have those wonderful uh, times that we can celebrate and we can all, all support the library that way. So I just wanted to, uh, to throw that out. And uh, that's about it for me. Does do any of the other trustees have a report that they would like to give? Liz. After talking with a couple of people, I'd like to be brave and make a motion to start our March meeting at 8.30 instead of 7.30 in the morning. So I move that we start our March meeting at 8.30 a.m. instead of 7.30 a.m. just to try that time. Uh, so do if we have it dies? <laughs> we have a second, okay. Do we have a second and go for from a second? Then we'll discuss it. I'll second. Okay. Well, discussion. I'll leave you hanging. <laughs> <laughs> discussion. Is this something that uh, that would work for our current board members? Um, in looking back in the past, it looks as far back as I could see that we've met at 7:30, but I don't see anywhere where it's actually, I haven't seen the stone tablets where it's been uh, decreed. It's probably in the ordinance, but it's not a problem to call a special meeting to see why you test it out and decide then if you want to officially change it or not. It wouldn't be a problem. I think the, you know, the first uh, order of concern would be with our current board and if this is something that, that we can do. Now, Steve, I, is that a pro works for you? Yeah, um, the only thing I would speak to is just knowing um, how we did meetings with the foundation. We did 7.30 in the morning, and then some people found it onerous, and then we did, we're going back and forth between 7.30 in the morning, 7.30 at night. Certain people couldn't do certain things. I mean, 7.30 in the morning is great, so, so it's done and you're gone, but it kind of prohibited people with small children from being part of the board because they had to get their kids off to school so they couldn't be part of the foundation board. I don't know if that's necessarily applicable here, so. 
I don't have strong feelings one way or the other. I'm um, very much in favor of the 730 meetings. I mean, people have other places to go, and 730, you get over with. You have the rest of your yeah. day. The rest of your day. I that, have an 830 office meeting. I, you know, just, I don't know. Any other comments, Alden? Well, I, I mean, I, we talked about this a while ago. I think we did. <clears throat> we were going to change the time. Mm -hmm. I, think I think it's think come we all up. unanimously agreed to keep it at 7.30. Just keep it at 7.30. Easy for people to get to. I'm, I'm retired. I could have it at 9.30. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, about, how about lunch meeting? <laughs> well, and I, I feel the same. You know, I'm in that same position, uh, being retired and not Me having too. to deal with this. The work schedule now. <laughs> Genevieve, how about, uh, you have younger children. I do so. not. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're a lot younger than mine. <laughs> well, I've been an empty nester for, I don't know, five years. Is it? No, yes. So no, I'm okay, either way. But, um, you know, if I have to sacrifice a little bit of some other activity once a month, it's okay, whichever way. Yeah, and I, I think that if we changed it from 7.30, we would probably have to go to 8.30 to avoid the traffic, that the congestion idea. here as people are dropping off at, at Huntington. Eight, at 8 o'clock is their start time for the school. By 8.30, things would have calmed down. And why would you want to move to 8.30? Just so you can sleep a little longer. Well, I think I still get up early. But I don't have to be places right. by 7.30 in the morning. Right. And my other thought was that as we're getting into the budget part of the year and this capital priority list, <coughs> and that we've had a lot of personnel changes in the last few months and a reorganization, that we might want some other members of the city staff to attend our meetings um, in March, maybe April, regarding the budget and the capital priority list, especially if Irene's not the one anymore to present it to the city council. And so I thought also that we might be more, um, present company accepted Amanda, but <laughs> it might be, more, the other staff might come if it's at 8.30. But we can also invite them and stay till 8.30 and have them speak at a certain time of, on the agenda. I do know because like Rec and Library do follow a different schedule, but anyone in City Hall, I mean, we start at 7, so the 7 is not, 7.30 is not prohibited. Yes. Yes. So I'll oh, I don't mm -hmm. really appreciate it. This is your late meeting. This is a late yeah. meeting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no coffee for you. Yes, I showed it. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> oh, that is a great news. Thank you. I have a doctor appointment right after, so it, it's just, it was 7.30 was when we ended our meeting, I just, I can always reschedule, it's not big deal. Do we maybe want to just give it a try for one month and see how it feels? Might be a good idea. Just uh, as a, <clears throat> and with the budget coming up, maybe March would be a good time to do I, I that. I think I said in my motion, a March meeting at 8.30. Not all meetings in perpetuity. Oh, just okay. I'm, why don't we try it? Yeah. Let's, Can I restate yeah. my? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So Amend I'd your like to uh, make a motion to begin the March meeting at 8:30 a.m. to try it out to see if we ultimately want to make that change. Um, but as I said, my thoughts about March and the budgeting timeline. Is there a second? Second. Again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this will be a one time, uh, and we can just we can discuss it um, maybe towards the end of the March meeting to see how everybody feels at that point. Um, and we, in the meantime, will uh, see if there is anybody else on on city staff that we might want to uh, attend our March meeting. So um, all, we have a motion on the floor. Can I vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mar in March, we will meet at 8.30. We'll be back to 7.30 in April if, if we don't make another decision. Sorry, the date is the 23rd? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the 21st, was it? 23rd. 23rd. 23rd.
Okay, um, Mary, the Crane Art Gallery. Oh, okay. Uh, Crane Art Gallery has always had good news, and um, we, are current, we didn't receive any income last month. However, we are scheduled all the way to May 29th. So our gallery committee also met on January 23rd. Um, we have an offer to exhibit at our and it was accepted, so we need to arrange for the time. But currently, we have two scheduled artists. One is a landscape artist, um, Justin Meta. He likes the outdoor. He likes to instill light and inner voice into his artwork. Another one, and he is scheduled for February 29th to April 10th. So if you'd like to see that type of art, artwork, please come join us. From April 18th to May 29th, we will have a mixed media painting by Sean Kirkpatrick. Now, we know working with acrylic, epoxy, enamel, but with gold. So, um, with gold on, uh, on the, on the a stretch canvas. I'm curious how this artist put gold on Artwork. I know we know ceramic, they put uh, gold, they paint gold actually. But the painting to put gold, now it, 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 is, it is an interesting reflection of San Marino. Does it have any correlation? We will yet to find out. So it's on from April 18 to May 29. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mary. Yeah. Uh, just a, an, a historic aside, early, early paintings that you see in museums that look very gold, that is gold. Oh, that's it's right. not paint, it's gold leaf. Oh, sure. The old Byzantine paintings, so okay. they did, uh, oh, okay. they did do have, that. Uh, we have an extra. So well, now we, I'm now just, I'm, I'm still learning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, let's move on to new business. Um, March 11th, we have our annual joint meeting with City Council. And for the, sure. I, I don't know. has that, that been has changed? Been changed. Go ahead. Yeah, I can explain, and we're apologies for late notice. Um, for a variety of reasons, one being I know council has quite a few items on their agenda and closed session issues that need to come up, but also with a kind of an attempt to reassess the joint meetings and make them more productive for everyone. We're actually pausing at the moment, and we're looking to reschedule all of them and change the time of year for everyone. Um, so our city clerk will probably be reaching out to, to you both to find the right time in the coming weeks. Um, and if you have thoughts on how those meetings would be better structured, um, I know they've been kind of free form in the past, but if you have thoughts on kind of a better way to make them more productive, we'd love to hear that as well. What do we want to accomplish? What does the council want to accomplish when we have the joint meeting? What, what do they? I mean, it was a party. <laughs> His, historically, the commissions would, um, or boards, would bring up issues of concerns, um, wants, um, questions for the city council. It really was quite open and, um, as Amanda's referencing, left to the body to sort of lead the discussion. It's your time, so to speak. And thank you for that update. I didn't know that had occurred. Do we know when the, we, we want to get them back on schedule again? We do. I know soon, and I know Marcel will probably talk to you guys about that to get that going. Okay. I'd be interested in any you know questions or hot issues that other council members have for us that we, if we're going to speak to them, we'd want to know what they want to know. And as you know, going yeah, into budget time, we're starting to get preoccupied with that. But as a council group, this is our third year developing the budget, and I hope you felt it last year. We're becoming more streamlined, mm -hmm. and with capital improvement issues, we have a set date for that. So um, I hope you have less anxiety in working with us this year. <laughs> um, I think we're, we're getting at a more together point internally so as far as the other meetings hopefully we'll have an update soon yeah it'll be soon I'm sure by next month we can probably already have something by then scheduled or at least the plan for what we have. I agree with Liz that it would be a good idea good for us to know what the council wants to talk about so we can prepare for it <laughs> instead of just going in and uh, get blindsided by some questions. Historically we we do not bring issues to you historically, but we could certainly reframe it. And I think that the thought being is what do you like about the way you're operating and what could the city council assist 
for things to be better, but um, not to pick favorite children. But this body um, spins like a top, so um, it's a joy in meeting with you, whereas some other bodies uh, have difficulty in understanding their purposefulness. And one in particular has really been going through a process with that recently, and it's starting to come into place quite nicely. But um, this group, of course, is well viewed, and um, I commend each of you for keeping it that way. Thank you, Susan. We always like to hear things <laughs> like that. <That's, laughs> makes us feel good. I'm, in the past, I know we've uh, we've always enjoyed our our meeting with City Council, and we've tended to, at least as long as I've been on the board. Uh, spend that meeting mostly help giving city council an idea of what a, what we've been up to in the in the year since we had uh, had met before I but with that uh, that dialogue could certainly change to include hot button issues or whatever whatever else needed to be addressed and i think even dreams would be a great idea to bring to us think outside of the box um, as you know, in the city, each council operates differently. You'd be careful what you wish for. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have a strong push going on for economic development right now, yeah. and it's simply because of the composite of the council. So who knows what the library could bring to the table. Um, think bold and, and feel free to bring that to us also. Okay. Well, the good news for everybody is you have a few extra minutes in your agenda between now and March 11th because you don't have to write a little five-minute speech <laughs> to get to the city council. So um, we will add that to continuing business next on uh, next month's agenda um, so that we can so see where we go. We know it's not going to be March 11th. It, that just cross that date off. Do and we know when it will be approximately? We don't yet. I think we may. So after that, it's going to be thick of the budget season, um, probably more in like the spring or summer would be my guess, but we'll get back to it as soon as we can. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't be before our, our meeting on the 23rd? No, 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 it will not be. No. no. Okay. No. It used to be later in the year. Yeah. I remember. It's been March as long as, as yeah, I've been on the board, so that's, and that's been at least five years. Um, okay, let's move on to number two, the Library Journal Star. Um, li the Journal Star Libraries. Kroll Library last year had a very, um, uh, we had very good news that we, uh, that we were the top five point, and I can't remember the point, 5.9 percent. We, are, we have moved up to the five point. Just get rid of that point nine. <laughs> we are getting better, which is, uh, as Irene can, uh, can tell you all, that is not the trend uh, nationwide with libraries getting better. Um, no, no. Libraries are struggling in the country, and we really need to be proud of what's going on here. Uh, we've got a very special facility. Irene, can you tell us what the... What the basis for the rating is? It's uh, programming, uh, book purchasing, um, uh, That those are mainly it. Those are what I was putting in uh, to the state in September. I file a report with the state and I give them our statistics. Okay. So that's what they rated on. When you say programming, it's the, the classes we the offer classes, and that yeah. type of thing? Mm -hmm. Number of classes. So there are about uh, 1,251 libraries in this budget class, which is uh, a million to five million, and we're 1.5 million. But we were number 66 on that list. So it's pretty good ranking, I would say, for a small town library. Well, we have such a wonderful facility. We have places to have things. Right. And, mm -hmm. You know, the ability to feature all these wonderful programs. Right, right. So. Yes, very, very proud. We need to thank our council, too, that keeps the budget, right? Some yes. of us really struggle with the budget when <laughs> you're so without budget. And we have the budget consistently backing us up for good work. Yeah, and to support your leadership. The money is behind you. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> true with the uh, strong foundation. Yeah. Strong friends, mm -hmm. selling books yeah. for 25 cents oh, yeah. and then giving $50,000. That is their, that's, that's a their lot of books. <laughs> so. Okay, um, welcome Hal. 
we have a guest, our foundation president, and you've come in at such an opportune time because the next item on the agenda, I am going to um, ask for a joint meeting of the foundation and the friends and the trustees in May on the 6th. Um, thinking about timing, decided that this probably should be an evening meeting um, and hopefully as many people as possible can come. I know in the past we have had social gatherings up here in the Thornton Room, but for, for this one I'd like to go down to the bathroom and Irene and I checked. It's available. Um, it, that's a very busy place. We had to kind of look for days <laughs> that would work. Um, to meet at 7.30 with the three boards and have it be a meeting where each, uh, each of our boards can uh, ad address whatever issues they want to at the time. Just pick maybe, maybe two items. We won't make it a, very, a really long meeting, but it will be a, a way that we can, that we can see how we might even, how we might better work together. I mean, we're doing a pretty good job right now. I think we've all, all ag agree with that, but the fact that our number one concern for all three boards is this library, this facility, and making sure that it endures into the future, uh, I think it, it can, we can only help it along better if we are really working together. And, I don't know all the members on the foundation. I'd like to have the opportunity to get to know them better. Uh, the friends, I know some of them uh, because we've had children that went through school together. Um, but again, I, I think that this would be a way that we can bring concerns also. Um, the foundation does such a fantastic job raising money for items that the trustees earmark as important for the library, maybe we can have some dialogue and, and see how that, how that can work better, how we can make suggestions perhaps for items that are maybe a little bit more sexy and, and would draw attention and, and people's money uh, better than others. <coughs> I mean, we all know that, that's, uh, that that helps yeah. when you're raising money. And, and the foundation, I spoke to the foundation members, they're all in support of a collaboration between the trustees, the foundation, and the friends. Um, I, I truly believe that if we do that, we'll have uh, actually a greater support for the library. I think and, so too. And actually um, having that uh, support level at the council, since we're the foundations, we actually uh, <coughs> uh, look to you, the trustee, <coughs> on what to fund. And uh, you know we'll be more than happy to um, generate that effort to get that done. But you, as a trustee, knows exactly what you need here. And you know one of the things that came up in one of the meetings was uh, uh, a maintenance schedule. Um, I don't think you have one, but it'd be good to have one because um, it's this is our 11th or 12th year, 12th year, and we haven't had a maintenance schedule, meaning things are going to start falling apart from now on. <laughs> And we need to maintenance. Yes. Yeah. So you know, like painting, I don't think you have that in your budget. Uh, just things that uh, come up that break down, like chairs, and and we we could handle the computers. And the only thing that we ask to do is the staff and city to maintain it. So um, I think that that would go a long way, and it would probably save us a lot of money if we were to just maintain what we have. And uh, we're all in it. We don't. We're not the decision makers here. We're we're actually working for you to to make the money, get the money to do these things, and uh, and we're more than happy to do that. And I think a collaboration would really work out really well. Well, the, I'm I'm very happy to hear that. And uh, with this uh, with this meeting, my my goal is that it goes well, that this collaboration works, and we turn this into an annual. Um, event and for now it's May. We may decide it at, at a future time that maybe a different month is better. But I, and in thinking about it, I and I know that this past fall you did delicious destinations again, which was fabulous. Um, but maybe meeting as early as May is a good thing uh, yeah. because it, if if you do have a fall event planned, 
uh, that would be a, a, a good time to start. Um, I have to say that this is this year or this past year, we made the most money ever. Uh, we made over a hundred thousand dollars. So thanks to all of you uh, for participating. It was an exciting event. Uh, you committed over one hundred three or to be exact. Uh, wow. So I think with this collaboration, we could do even better. And um, we um, we know that there's going to be things coming down the pipeline that needs to be replaced or just to be added, and I think that this is a really good venue um, to make to make these things happen. Um, without the destination, we were probably only thirty thousand uh, dollars in our budget, but then we've kind of grown, and we have taken this stance that we're going to do it every other year, otherwise we're going to lose uh, board members because it's so stressful. I know Steve knows. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm on this board now. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, with, uh, with uh, the friends and the trustees and the foundations coming together, I think it would be, uh, uh, the next one will be an awesome event. I mean, this one was pretty good, too. Yeah. So, oh, yes, so, I think we can so, all agree that so was Kudos to everyone. Good. I, it's not just the foundation because the foundation needs uh, the trustee support, the friend support, the community support to come in and you know, give us money. So it's great that they are willing to do that. Mm -hmm. How about the endowment? Would you comment on that? Well, the endowments, we're still working on it. Um, we have a few, not yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're planning to uh, have that grow. Um, it's kind of, a, I guess it's kind of a new thing for uh, for us uh, foundation members, uh, we were, we had a few seminars on endowments, and there are uh, families that are interested in uh, creating an endowment for the foundation. So we're kind of working on it, but we're kind of uh, a little bit behind as far as uh, the learning curve on that one. Um, we're looking at looking towards the school's foundation on how they do their endowments, and uh, there's a few uh, members there that we spoke to that are really an expert in endowments and they've offered to help if there's any interest in that. So uh, that's our next task. Uh, our first task was get some money for the library. Yeah. Our next task is keep that money for the future. Yeah. That's what the endowment will do for us. So keep to keep in touch. Uh, keep to, well, we keep will. We will do that. Uh, I'd like to make a motion then that we have a joint meeting <laughs> on May the 6th in the Barth Room uh, at 7.30. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Just for clarification, it's 7.30 p.m. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <Seven. laughs> Thank you. Yeah. 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 Um, I was going to ask Linda, the same question. Is it your intention to also invite Josette Espinosa, the Community Services Director? She works on Wednesdays. That would be. And she's overseeing the library in the rec department, correct. is that correct? Yes, but she is interim. She may not be here at Well, we could invite her. Yeah. And um, if not, then the person who then communicates the budget. But by May 6th, we should know. I mean, yeah. the May 6th budget calendar, you're almost done with the budget. You're almost to the point of adopting the whole budget. So what would be good about that, too, is that we know what capital improvement is going to go forward to, that we're going to ask for city money for, mm -hmm. and then what other projects need other mm -hmm. funds out. Right. Okay. <laughs> I did see some of the list, but it's probably not a finalized list in your draft. Uh, okay. Right. So, so when, when that uh, gets finalized, we'd like to work with you on seeing which ones are a priority for you. And uh, yeah, it, it really, it's it's a, it's about the amount. But um, if we know exactly what you're looking for and prioritize it, we could actually make that as a goal for our next delicious destination or others. We yeah. we actually have that for this year. Is we're going to be doing a uh, sort of a flea market type of thing where we're going to bring some money in in the interim, only because we need to fill the, the, this year's gap with something a lot smaller. So uh, we're looking at that, and then that money we're anticipating maybe maybe about twenty five thousand dollars would come in. So so we're looking at things that would not only be just the delicious destination, but smaller things, mm -hmm. even uh, special uh, lecture series, things like that. Where 
we invite an author to come in. And uh, yeah, that sounds exciting. Uh, and, and have a talk uh, during a luncheon or something like that. And that would bring some revenue in that would also help out the library. So we're not just uh, relying solely on this delicious destination because we do have a, a year in between that we could actually experiment with other fundraising events. So, so that's a good thing. Um, my question is, would May be too late, uh, I should ask Susan, uh, for any decisions or anything, or is that something that- uh, Too late on decisions. On, on any um, budgeting items? Uh, because I, I believe that by May, you've already solidified the- uh, Oh, we're, we're still fairly early in the process in terms of getting everyone's input, so. Um, okay. We, we have just, um, uh, on our agenda for this week is the priority, so we're we're still quite early. Okay, great. But by May, I think you're saying yes, it would be very far into the budget process. What? Um, when is the budget completed? The goal is to adopt. I just have it in front of me, so I didn't want. Uh, the goal is to adopt it on either May 13th or the 29th. Oh, we have okay. June as kind of leeway if council yes, comes back yes. with changes. Mm -hmm. But what I think we'll know by that May 6th. What project is, is, you might know today, what project is at the top that yes. um, we want to support going forward to the capital right. improvement process to ask for city money for? Mm -hmm. And once that we know that, then Irene will help us know what are the other projects that need to be done. Okay. And then I think from that list, I hope the foundation looks at it to say, not only what are the library's needs, but what project helps the foundation fundraise? Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that uh, uh, the members had stressed is that, um, and I mentioned it before about the maintenance schedule, is that uh, the foundations, I think the bylaws are saying that, uh, that they generally don't do maintenance, like pay for painting or pay for uh, re repolishing the, the plaques and things like that. So if you just keep that in mind that uh, we would be more than happy to replace or add to the, uh, the library, but uh, the, the foundation members think that the general maintenance uh, for the facility is basically up to the city. I don't know if people agree with that, but I think it makes sense. I think being prompted with the schedule is a good idea. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I, I, they're really anxious to see that eventually, but um, they're saying that that would really help them, and probably all three of us, uh, the friends, the trustees, and, and the foundations, see what's coming up and what we could uh, pretty well, much and it will Well, it'll help us to project into the future, right. too, yeah. you know, in, right. where in May we, we won't ha have the ability to impact this year's budget. But it's always good to have a whole year's start on what we want for the next year. Exactly. And uh, that will, will put us in a good position of working together uh, uh, with, along with, I, uh, with Irene to, to make sure that we... Yes, that's fantastic. I, I think that would be a great um, start to continuing this uh, building for the many, many years just to keep that uh, yes. maintained in great shape. When you have your next meeting, please thank the members of what a great job you did on that delicious foundation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I will. Thank you very much. Yes. I'm great. not sure how we could talk the next one, but we're going to try. It's really fabulous, and it's a fun time to, yeah. Yeah. to, um, see, to see residents that I normally don't see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's, that's nice everyone thing about it. It's, yeah. uh, it's not yes. just the schools. It's just not like the Chinese club or anything like that. It's the community here. Yeah. 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 Talking about, I, we have friends that have already graduated maybe five years ago, six years ago. Don't ever see them. I saw them at the Delicious Destinations. And you know, little, you know, I don't see many of the parents. That's yeah, great. Right. But there they are. So it, it's a great community event, and I'm hoping that it will last forever. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, move on to the next item. Um, new business, uh, we wanted to be sure that everybody was aware that the library is a voting center. Wow. I was a little surprised when I got my sample ballot in the mail that it didn't list the library on it. It told me a number of places in Pasadena I could go, and but 
There's a separate it did one. Not, uh, one did you say what? Yeah. And I'm not very far away. <coughs> Would you, Irene, could you um, uh, let us know a little bit about this uh, process? What is happening? Yes, you may have noticed a, a vessel, a giant <laughs> storage. <laughs> Oh, yes. oh, that's the library parking lot. Okay. Yeah. Wait, which is against code, but that's. We asked them to put it somewhere else, but they didn't. So um, th that contains the voting uh, machines. So on Friday afternoon, they'll come here and they'll set up the voting machines in the Barth community room, and then the Barth will be off limits to the public and to the staff until after the voting ends on March 3rd. So, and then they'll come and pick up the machines. So uh, we, we've, we're feeling very good about it. We feel like we're doing our part in supporting the voting, the new voting system. And also I, I anticipate that we'll be doing it in November as well. Great. So we're hoping for a big turnout. Had they told you how many machines will be at this particular site? They have not. They're, I think they're broken into three groups. I was just curious. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. And we also have set up with the mayor's help, um, the League of or the League of Women Voters is coming in on Wednesday um, at 3:30 to 4:30 and 6 to 7 to do some demos and just helping people understand. It is new; it's a lot different than how you voted in the past. So we got that set up rather quickly to see if anyone has questions and wants to kind of get a little more information uh, before they vote. So they'll be here on this Wednesday. This Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Has anyone seen in the, the actual? No, I haven't. I, it, it looks almost like a keyboard where you can either um, sit in a wheelchair or with walker. You can pick up headphones and hear your oh. options. You can um, take a screen and pick which of the 16 or 17 languages. You can enlarge the font. You can tilt the screen. Wow. Um, you can bring your um, phone in where you have already gone to the site, marked your choices, stick it in, oh, get your on. print out. <laughs> um, it, it, it does just about everything except walks and talks. And it's this cheesy looking little thing. And there's only one electric cord going into it. So then when you feed it in, then you get the receipt back and that's what you're submitting. But it's really fascinating. And, and the sensitivity to all individuals is what I think you'll find amazing. But like I said, this registration process may cause the confusion because one can walk in without a lot of ID can change their vote, and as was asked at the meeting, if they go to another site the same day, these provisionals are all gathered with very short notice down in Norwalk. So there's a few glitches, but I think it'll go very, very well. So, so do you go to a, a registration page so that you can't vote twice? If you are an ongoing voter, but if you are I think they use the term transient or whatever, somebody who is not currently on the right. list. Um, they take some information from you, but as you know, this whole picture ID is becoming a controversial issue, so there's not a lot required. So if you haven't voted in a few years and you maybe want to come here and vote, if you go someplace else, you still have to sign your provisional, mm -hmm. and it's when it gets to Norwalk that they allegedly will pull <laughs> all yes. these different I, duplicates. I hope this equipment's not the equipment that they used in Iowa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. thing. They still did do, it's still, as, I, although sorry. it's high tech, there still is a paper trail, that's yes. what's interesting about it. It still prints out and you can check. Yes. What before you turn it in? So they actually, after all that technology, are using a paper ballot. It's still getting a paper and ballot. It's huge. So I voted on it. Saturday in oh, Pasadena. It's the ballot's like this big. Well, it's bigger than this. I think. Yeah, it's a big sheet. I thought there's one thing. If your name is on the bottom of the list. If someone did not scroll down all the way, you might be completely missed. Mm -hmm. you know. But they did a study on this. They did yeah. a mock election uh -huh. in November with a few thousand people uh -huh. from start to finish to see about the gathering and this issue of names going over to a second page, mm -hmm. the fear exactly. that people... Are, and every study has shown that people did, <laughs> uh, people did, did go to the second okay. page because the number of mock people who were listed on the second page one at 
sometimes a higher rate. So oh. that's encouraging. Okay, yeah, because I was thinking, hmm, if you're not on the first page, you might be at a disadvantage. Yes. Maybe there's a next button. Yes. Well, yeah, I was thinking yeah, maybe if you have to get to that next right. button if, before if you, you don't play. hit that. I was thinking if they program that correct. I mean, program that. If you have to click on the next before you could actually make a choice, then that prevents people not seeing the second page. Mm -hmm. So that was my little concern. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, uh, I assume they'll have people here to assist. I believe so. Yes. Some that come in to help them yes. vote. Many county employees this time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as opposed to citizens or students. Yeah. Volunteers. So, yeah, yeah, and if, you, if there's complaints, obviously our city clerk, Eva, can help, but it is a county-run election. The city's not involved besides giving the location for the polling place, mm -hmm. um, but obviously still call us with any concerns and we can help coordinate. Okay. Um, we'll go from voting to census. Census <laughs> is coming up. Census day is April 1st. Uh, we'll set up a, a couple of public internet access computers to be census computers and we'll have uh, some volunteers on the weekends at, at spe specified times to help people fill out the census if they want to. So we have a couple, of, we have uh, Mary Ulin on the foundation is very pro census, so she's working. She'll be helping us set that up. So I just wanted to let you know. That concludes my report on the census. On the census. Um, and then our last item on new business, um, a grant proposal to refurbish the young adult area. The young adult area has seen better days and <laughs> there's some paint chipping off and the kids keep chipping off the paint. So, as children are. Yeah, as children do. do. <laughs> so um, I, I propose that I put in a grant proposal to the Women's Club of San Marino to see if they would be willing to uh, refurbish that room because they they support women and children and they didn't leave out teens so <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to write a grant proposal I just is want to let you know. A, is there a cap for their grant? I don't think so. Wonderful. No. How much do you propose? <laughs> At least 5,000 I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah the beanbag chairs have seen better days and mm -hmm. The, uh, there's some threadbare upholstery and yes, things that need to be Just refurbished. Just curiosity, why do we not have a maintenance closet in our um, physical facility to maintain our site, at least a minimum something? Why? why? It's, it's logical to have it. It's just such a big facility. Well, yeah, that, that's what Hal was, was addressing earlier, and, and I think, I think we've all, we're all on that page that we need to get that, uh, that in, in place um, so that we don't end up with a lot of deferred maintenance. Right, and I'll mention that on the 2021 budget update, that's what we're talking about. I think yeah. a year ago we had a schedule. We've talked about it. Okay. I, I, the, uh, the, one of the... One of the, the representatives here from the city, who's his name? Uh, uh, out of it? out of that discussion, where are some of the items that are on the capital improvement? Yeah. But um, list right now the painting and the window tinting and right. things like that. But I think if we get down to actual, you know, this chair needs to be reupholstered mm -hmm. in two oh, and a half yeah. years, kind right. of oh, yeah, kind of thing. We need, need to we need to get a, a list of of everything that's mm -hmm. facility related. Right. Okay, um, on to continued business, capital improvements. Yes, everyone's so excited about this. <laughs> um, so unfortunately the list was not ready for the agenda distribution, but I was able to make some updates this morning. So if you all want to grab some coffee. Is it different from the last time? Yes. yes. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I think all right, so there have been a few, several developments in regards to even just the current projects that are underway now. So just going down the list, the entry canopy, um, there was concern mentioned at the last meeting about the design, um, the layout and things like that. So I went to Public Works just to make sure that we hashed out the final details and more questions <laughs> came up. <laughs> and it appears that when Chris Yu had started the project, 
his initial idea of it was different than what was later conveyed to me, yeah. and what I received was conveyed to Public Works, but when we finally all met together, yeah. apparently we were all on different pages on <laughs> the project. <laughs> the other thing was that the beams are hollow and cannot support weight, period. Oh, well, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, I thank you for doing that. Yes, so as a result of that, the project is gonna go through a sizable change order and Public Works is handling from here on out. Um, so I haven't received any updates or an updated timeline onto that, but Public Works is handling that project. Does that change the cost? Yes. What? That's the question. And so what Public Works is going to request is an actual frame installed over the beams and that's going to be a sizable cost increase because when I got quotes, a frame easily started at $12,000. I'm, I'm sorry, can I interrupt for a second? Because we're, I think we're kind of mixing two things, <clears throat> the canopy and I mean, what's over the entrance to the door right. as opposed to what's over the bookshop. Right, so what's, over gonna, what's gonna be over the main entrance has not changed. That will be Correct. the same design. Okay. What's going over the Good. beams by the bookshop, gotcha. that's gonna have to Perfect. change. Okay, the word canopy to me was meaning the front doors as opposed okay. to right. the other things. Oh. Right. Okay. okay, I have a question then. If Public Works is going to take this on, are they going to do, are, are they going to look at whether this is the proper way to address the water issue because I think when, when this came up mm -hmm. uh, quite a while back, well, this was when Chris was here um, in discussion, it, the water going into the bookshop isn't just because of the rain that's coming down in front of the door, mm -hmm. it's because of of the way of the grading of the the side the sidewalk right. there uh, was not done right. right, and that would definitely be a public works project mm -hmm. to fix it. And if that was done, I mean, it would still be nice to have a canopy, mm -hmm. an awning, but the the necessity would would be cha would change, right? Um, and maybe even the um, the size and uh, the the strength of, of what's up there, uh, because the the water is going to continue. It's it's coming down. It's going downhill, and it uh, it follows the easiest path. Mm -hmm. And the easiest path right now is right in the doorway of the bookshop. Mm -hmm. And you know, and unless that's addressed, right. I think they're going to continue having trouble, okay. whether there's an, a canopy or an awning or or not. And right. so I I would really like to see Public Works. At, at least do a, a, a study, and they're the ones who have the expertise mm -hmm. in you know, how this should be. I just know that it's not quite right. I couldn't tell you what the angle should be right. or What's how to fix it. What's the longest term fix for the problem of water flooding the store? If it is the grading, then that has to be resolved so because... It yeah. might not be this project for a canopy at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Actually, that's I, a point. Yeah, I have found Michael Throne to be an outstanding civil engineer, and I think as long that's as my you understanding. look at the entire exterior area, um, to not limit anything but that whole block and the perimeter, I think if you have your liaison who knows the most working with him, you will end up with a great product. Yeah. Okay. I can follow up with him. Yeah, if, if you would, I'd, whether it's putting drainage Mm -hmm. in or doing something with the concrete. Right. Yeah, when we talked about it before, the drainage was really the issue. And yeah. So it was a matter, yes, the rain was coming down, but it was going in instead of <laughs> to the right. courtyard. Yeah, and I know the drains have been an issue just all throughout the facility. I know there's a drain within that patio area, and when it started to rain, that easily flooded. Goes up. So, yes, it does. Yeah, so I know there's, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on that item? Yes. When will we have an update? <laughs> I'll speak to Public Works after this, and then I'll see if I can get something. Is that the next meeting? or yeah. At the next meeting, that will be an update, yes. Okay, okay. okay Liz? So, um, since last April, um, and the former analyst, Chris Hughes, started this capital priority list, and a lot of the um, costs are still the same mm -hmm. from last April, and I wouldn't expect for them to be updated until we're about ready to do a project. Mm -hmm. But the reason for this, and look at, I mean, you've done a great job and we can read it and it's big font. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but the reason is to have one document 
that identifies and priorities, prioritizes our capital needs and prioritizes them, and I think you said this too, Hal, as viewed by Irene, the city librarian, and her staff. Hal has great ideas, I have great ideas, we go way back. <laughs> and, um, but it's what the library staff feels is important. Mm -hmm. And um, I think one of the things that came to mind about why this is important is in our packet for today's meeting, they include the foundation minutes from your January meeting, January 10th. And it talked about the, life with the foundation board discussing fundraisers. And I thought, well, what, why are you raising money? Do we have a project yet? And the foundation board was told that we at the library board have two priorities, full staffing, we all like full staffing, and the electronic bestsellers list, which we talked about, but none of these kinds of projects that we're looking at on the capital priority list were brought to them, and it, it might not be time yet, but I think this is for them too, and this is for the friends, and this is for the lady up the street who wants to donate $5,000 to the library, but it's also to show Susan and her colleagues on the city council that we're only asking for a fraction, a little <laughs> fraction <laughs> of the, the money to fulfill the library's needs, we're asking of the city. And then we're gonna go forward and fund it with other means. We do have the foundation and the friends. We also have 51,000 unallocated dollars in the city coffers to accomplish some of these things. And um, it, it amazes me that we don't have some up-to-date costs. Even though at the public computer replacement, um, we know the foundation is committed to $35,000, but that's still, we still don't know what the actual costs are gonna be. Um, the window tinting and the interior painting, I'd like to have a conversation about because I think that goes to what some people have brought up in terms of ongoing maintenance. Um, right, I I'll like to see it on this list because it's a need that you've identified, but I think it goes either the library is responsible to fund it or somebody else is responsible <laughs> <laughs> to fund to the interior <laughs> painting and the window tinting and you know, I don't know whose responsibility those costs are, but I think if that's an important project, if it's all in one place, and we can say to the city council, this is what we need, they'll say this is what we'll fund, and then we'll go forward with being able to find money for the other projects. Right, and so um, my question was, if there were any questions for the entry candidate, because I'm gonna go line by line on all oh, of these. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought I you wanted to do. I will give kudos to Josette Espinoza. She called several of us after the last meeting, um, and thank you for communicating the information. Yeah, I thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I'd like to add that uh, what Liz said is, uh, is right on is we don't really know what what the, the trustee is, is advocating for or even you know what they can advocate for so we get our cues from the trustees Irene um, and and then we throw it into this uh, list of a wish list and then we look at the numbers versus how much it's going to cost to to do any of these, and then we uh, we actually recommend projects that are of priority to you, uh, to the trustees, to the city, and see how we could uh, match that with our funding goals. And so, so I think this is a perfect uh, uh, scenario for us to collaborate because you know we're we're kind of like uh, at the door waiting for the ticker to come in, and once it does, we discuss it, but. If we don't have anything to to really judge what's what's needed, it's kind of difficult because a lot of the um, the uh, sponsors and the donors are, are kind of curious to know how, what what that money is going to. And you know, if we say, oh, it's going to uh, avoid flooding or uh, upgrading uh, the BART uh, AV, you know, that's something that's saying, oh yeah, I can relate to that. I, I'll give money to that. So really. It would be good if we had a, 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 a
projects that we could advocate for. So I think this is perfect. This uh, whole uh, um, uh, process is actually something that we're looking for. Does Good. it help the city council? You want to go on to the next know? item? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Does it help the city council to know the projects that the library wants to accomplish? Oh, absolutely. And I think even if we're not asking you for maybe that's the the <laughs> 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 and, and I think that do you have a, do you have a date about when the community one council canopy member but project to will be completed? The I don't know. They need to do the change order the and then once we have that we'll need to again that's public works handling that, so they'll have to do the revisions, the change order. Depending on the amount, you have to go to council, so that may impact the timeline. It doesn't mean you'll get What do you mean, May? <laughs> yeah. It puts you in a very nice position listing everything that you are purchasing. We'll be ready for the rain well, next we get, year. Get, yeah, that's right. We get, re get through the okay. issue okay. with no more rain. Okay. So no more questions on the entry canopy? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next one is the Barth AV upgrade. So that finally went out to bid. We had the pre-bid meeting last Wednesday, so that's the opportunity for the vendors to come on site, do the measurements, see where everything's going to be installed, and then from that they will actually create the bid. And that will follow about a timeline of we have to give them 10 days, the bids will come back, and then we'll review. What kind of interest was there in the pre-bid meeting? So there was only one vendor who attended, but the pre-bid meeting was not required ah. as part of the process. And so from my understanding, there's two other vendors interested. And I believe Intellisys will may submit a bid as well. Oh, good. So, <laughs> thus far, it's sounding like four. And then, hmm? Just may. May. Oh. So, is this a use it or lose it fund? That's a good question. I know it has to be done by the end of this fiscal year because it's been allocated. If not, you would have to propose it, I guess, to carry over to the next fiscal You're right. year. So did you put that, a deadline in that RFP as well? Yeah, so they have 10 days from when the bid from is posted. From when they must bill us, they have the project done, punch listed, and paid for. Uh, that I need to get more information on. And so I can provide an update at the next meeting. Okay, and then with the entry canopy, sorry, I know. <laughs> what happens if through this um, review with Public Works, if it comes in at a higher cost, than when the city council already allocated that 39.65. Then it would have to go back to council to request additional funds. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to the bathroom upgrade, their major upgrades are going to be, so the HDMI connection, the wireless connection capabilities, so if you have your iPhone to do it wirelessly streaming, there will also be a Blu-ray player, the projector will also be upgraded. The challenge with that though is it is a four by three projector, so it's more of a square. All new presentations are by the 16 by nine, which means that the screen may have to be changed out as well. That'll impact the cost. Um, the podium, all the cords, as you all pretty much see, will be removed and it'll be wireless mics. Uh, as far as that project questions, Come back to us if you need a new screen. <laughs> okay. Motorized, right? Yes. The screen is not that expensive. Is no, it? There are a couple no. thousand dollars. Yeah. Is it a couple thousand dollars? Yeah, so right now it's estimated to be almost about $20,000. It may increase depending on what the bids propose. And then. Did you have a date when these bids will be back? They have 10 days, so I believe another week is what they have. So. So okay. at, by the end of this week is when the bids should have been received. Oh, okay. Yeah. Any questions on the bathroom? Uh, I just have a comment on, um, I'm sorry, that cannot be on silk. I just think that. So maybe we're barking at the wrong tree because if the, the, the problem is the, the water drainage mm -hmm. flow on the foundation. Why do we need to do a canopy? Right. Yeah, so I'll have that conversation for Public yeah, Works. Public Works is going to yeah. look at that. Yeah. Right. So maybe we're up still need the canopy for the front doors. Yes, mm -hmm. we still need, but that that slope is straight. You don't have water flow. Uh, no, it's not for a water issue. It's for just the oh, it all ice. It's so it's a two different issues. Yeah, yeah. the front is for the heat that gets in. Okay. Well, so it shattered. is partial rain, so there are the sensors, and so during the rain, sometimes it comes in. We don't want it to get onto the sensors and potentially damage them. So that's why there is that canopy over the main entrance. 
Yeah, but the, the main entrance, the canopy, but you're talking about the bookstore, you need a canopy too? No, I'm oh, not saying that. Okay. No, so that's what Public reason. Works is going to look yeah, at that. Yeah. Just for historical reference, the whole notion of a canopy over the bookstore came from the friends. Mm -hmm. There was a person who thought, hey, there's rain coming in here and we need a canopy, that's, that's where it came from. No scientific basis for it, whatever, just a person's personal opinion, yeah. and that's... Yeah, okay, that okay, so yeah. that's the same thing. Barking at the wrong tree. Right. The foundation drainage right. is an issue. Why right? for the canopy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But I'll make sure. Uh, the next one is the public computers. So that one is actually next on the continuing business. So I'll skip over that for now. The window tinting. So it's been a challenge to get the information that Chris you got. Um, it's been time consuming for intelligence to be able to go into his emails and extract the, the information that I need both keywords and et cetera, et cetera. So I haven't been able to figure out which vendors he contacted and what specifications he asked for. But in the entry canopy conversation, we also talked about the window tinting conversation. And what's come up is that we may be able to look at the option of Public Works simply purchasing the filming and installing it in-house. The challenge is if we want good quality film like 3M, you have to go through an authorized dealer. And sometimes they want a strong arm unit to do the, the installation costs. So I'm trying to see what alternatives we may be able to budget for on that one. So that's why there's that range of costs, because it's if we can acquire it outright, it'll be cheaper, or we'll have to go through the installation. Any questions on the window tinting? And that is, we need to get that done by July 1st to keep that money? Or do is it funded by anybody? This is for next fiscal year's budget. So, so if it's a priority, do you have to ask for the money again? Technically, we have to take it back to council, yes. Mm -hmm. If, unless this is a public works a project that's done internally. Right. Okay, yeah. great. Let's do that. We could. Yeah. But you're saying this was never approved. You were planning on this for this coming right. fiscal year. Right, 2021. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's there's why. No, there's no July deadline on this one, right? Right, because yeah. you don't I even have the money. Yeah. Yeah. You don't even have the money yet. Okay. Uh, oh, and then that was the other thing I forgot to mention. It was at the, at the last meeting, there was direction given for us to meet as staff, prioritize the different projects, and then bring it in. So the ranking here is first, number one was window tinting, two is security camera system. And then staff had originally identified purchase new seating and furniture as number three. However, that was proposed after the capital improvement deadline. And that is an item that we are potentially just even looking for the maintenance schedule. What's the capital improvement deadline? That was early January. What is it? That came from Michael Throne, our public works director, saying this is the deadline that we need to submit the public works requests. And so we hadn't given anything new by that deadline. So what what is here is what has been submitted from last year and just carrying over, and we are revising it. Will this be an annual deadline then? Should we be looking sure. at January of 2021 as our must get in by this date? Mm -hmm. uh, that, I mean, that's really important for us to know. That's a great question I'd have to ask. Yeah, I would say, I mean, that's a safe bet, but we're just doing how the budget's calendar works that by January you should have more. May I get clarity on? So with the public board, I thought it's an ongoing thing. If we have something broken, we call the public board and they rush over to re rescue us. So it doesn't work that way, you mean we have to mind that? I just want a clarity. So if we need any work, we fire a request and then it's a public work and we wait until they prioritize us, until it's our turn. So we will look disgraced for that long a period. Mm. I'm, I'm just getting clarity, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't use that word. So how does this work? Do we change any procedure? I know our library is getting older, so this become an issue. When we were young and beautiful, we don't really care. <laughs> but now we're getting, um, we need some cosmetic surgery, maybe. Mm -hmm. So we do care, right? <laughs> I mean, why right? the little children? Not me, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Okay, maybe we just need some new clothing. How about that? There you go. Makeup. Makeup. Some makeup. 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 Yeah, yeah, we just need some makeup. So do we have to wait for the public board? I'm a little confused. I just want to clear. <laughs> so this is, a, this is what we plan for the future, what we know needs to be improved upon. But if something breaks, so for example, the boiler happens to break, that is classified as an emergency, and public works does it immediately. And we will simply expend it out of the current fiscal year. 
Okay, so that yeah. doesn't have to have a, be, be fitted into our budget. Mm -hmm. So window, window, window tinting is a wish. It's not an emergency. Yeah. Right. It, it's a wish. It's a good wish because in the long run, it's going to end up saving us money right. Right. on electricity <coughs> and uh, right. wear and tear on everything the inside the building. Right. So right. yeah. Right. But it's still that it's not an emergency. Right. Public Works will come in and take care of that. Right. So, so we need okay. to set it up with the public or in advance. That's what First we're doing. We yeah. get the budget approved. Secondly, we set it up with the public work. So two different things have to align. So first we ask for the budget, second we align them. Once it's approved, we align them with the public work so they come to work. That's the, I'm, I'm asking. I'm, so how it works is that the department will create their wish list, they'll figure out the rough numbers, they'll send it to Public Works. Public Works takes everything from the city, from all the departments, they create the capital improvement plan, typically a five-year plan, and then whatever that goes, goes down to the city manager, then there's more discussion, and then whatever city manager creates then goes to the city council for budget approval. Oh, so the other way around. It's to the public or first, then to the city council. You know, the, the, they've seen all of these projects. Mm -hmm. So tell me again why we have a January. This is the first we've heard that there was a January cutoff mm -hmm. for introducing projects to be considered for capital improvement or capital projects. Right. So, Chris, you presented these items last year. So then Michael Throne came forward and said, do you have any new projects to add in addition to this by the January deadline? Why weren't we asked in November or in October about new projects that we wanted to put forward? And Robert, you might not be the right person to yeah, be right. asking That's or right. answering that. Please. Yes, I'm not too sure what happened in that instance, um, but once the information came to us, I know that Josette sent out an email to Irene and to uh, recreation staff asking if there were any new projects, and we didn't receive anything by that deadline, so as a result, Microthrone said, okay, so if no new projects were received, we can adjust what it then is on the list from last year. So, um, this young adult, a refurbishing that mm -hmm. room, mm -hmm. So we, Irene writes a wonderful grant to the Women's Club. They give her the money. Then what happens? Does Public Works have to say how much it's going to cost? Let's say the foundation decides to buy the furniture mm -hmm. and they pay for it outright. The city has no more control over that project. Mm -hmm. So I think this deadline, I can see if you gave him the security camera system and the security camera's been on for over a year. Mm -hmm. And it has not changed in the estimate. It was even in, and the estimate of $25,000 came from Chief Rueda's uh, February report. It didn't even come from Public Works and it didn't even come from the library staff. Right. It came from the fire chief. Mm -hmm. So why isn't there a better, firmer cost? Right. So that's, again, I'm trying to figure out where these files are from Chris Yu, if there are any. I did, however, in digging up some of the emails, find one interesting one regarding the security camera issue. And he apparently reached out to San Marino Security Systems and they currently provide our current alarm system. What they estimated the replacement was to be about $15,000 and they would gift us the labor. So the total cost should have been 30000 but apparently what it's saying is by their goodwill, they'd be willing to give us a discount. So that's a conversation I still have to have with San Marino to see if that goodwill still stands. If so, then we will adjust the figures. But until I have those basically in writing, I'm wary of adjusting the numbers. I was feeling like we were in a real good position with the city's, you know, this budget calendar mm. and where we were at and looking at what was going to go forward for capital improvements and equipment as well as, you know, the new budget that we've been talking about. But it's two things. It seems to me like this January date is artificial and prevents us from adding projects. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is, um, why are we just getting costs for projects that were approved last July 1st? It seems like July 2nd, we should have been getting some of the entry canopy and the bar that 
thing. I know the computer thing is different because you were buying computers with the whole city. But I think this is late in the game mm -hmm. to also be looking at some of the projects from last year. But now we're also being told it's late in the game for looking at projects that we're not even firm on. Mm -hmm. So I'm very dis I'm very discouraged by this. So you've officially submitted your capital improvement projects up the chain, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. That's of course last year. But for this coming year, so right. with the now January, has job and oh. he, there's a big gap. Um, what I'm, what I'm, they right. didn't give him the information. What um, I'm thinking mm -hmm. is, if you wish to amend it to attempt and say there was a misunderstanding, here's what we really want: give firm costs, detail the projects and priorities, attempt mm -hmm. an amendment. Yes, and those are the conversations that I'm having for Michael Throne. So there are the items in red. And those are the ones that we, Josette and I, are fervently talking to Michael Throne to see if we can make amendments. The other, for example, one of the things that came up was bathroom lighting. That wasn't identified by the January deadline, but now it's something that was mentioned as potentially needing improvements. So we're seeing what the wiggle room is to be able to see how much of an adjustment we can make on these projects and these requests. Considering it hasn't reached council yet. Right. Uh, my attitude is it can't hurt to submit, you know, worst possible, you're out the effort, but respectfully, give it a push. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I hear what you're saying about being out the effort, but if the council declines to fund it, then you have a pretty accurate figure to go elsewhere for your funding. Mm -hmm. Can you go on with the other items? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any questions on the security camera system? Oh, is there a monthly fee to um, store the, you know, like I have to pay Nest or Arlo so to store what they are recording? With currently, we do have Nest, and there is a monthly fee. But it doesn't fee. work. Why are we paying it? It, we it actually, works now. It works oh, now. Okay. <laughs> so is that, where is that in our budget? That's included on line item equipment. Hold on. Contract services. Okay. IT. And yeah. so... In looking at a security camera system, is a is that part of it too? What's the cost, monthly cost, ongoing? So what the proposal is, there wouldn't really necessarily be a monthly cost because it would be a closed circuit. So we would just have to pay for server capability, with, and that would just be an acquisition cost, be able to hold as much memory. So there wouldn't be ongoing service costs right. like with Nest. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any additional questions on that one? Okay, so the next one in red is the computer room renovation. So this was a prioritized um, item for staff, and we, how, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we had an initial conversation that the foundation identified this project. The compromise with the city would be that the city would pay for the architectural and engineering fees, and the foundation may potentially pay for the construction costs. Yeah, um, one of the reasons for that <coughs> partnership is because um, if we were to move, wait till we move forward with design and construction, you're, you're still going to have to have costs. So why not have the design done now and then possibly shelve it until we get the money, but at least we'll have a rough order, rough order of estimate cost for the project so that we could actually go out and try to see if that would be our, our goal for the funding. Because I don't even know how much it costs. Right. Like if, if, you know, I, if I were to say, a number, it would be totally probably blown out. But um, but it would be given uh, us an indication of what the estimated cost would be, so that we could kind of target that. Mm -hmm. So um, so our foundation suggested to Robert that we would, uh, if the city could do the design, which shouldn't cost much, mm -hmm. then we would know what the cost would be. So that you know you get your uh, you get your design and cost estimate, then we could go after the funding or maybe the city council would say, you know, that's, that's not a bad price, I'll, we'll take it. Mm -hmm. But without all that, uh, we won't know what this cost is. So, um, and, and I definitely think that it would really help because that, that room, uh, it's a large Deco room. Yeah. It's fairly inefficient because really, you know, you can't have, uh, a, it's not organized to have smaller um, study session areas. And with, uh, Irene found that 
there's more there's more demand for smaller uh, uh, enclosures than with those large ones, uh, and so we're going to reconfigure it, you know, to give the public what they want. Mm -hmm. So this is a discussion again that we're having with Michael Throne to see if that's feasible and then what push we need to have to make this possible for next fiscal year. Right. Any questions on that item? No. And uh, you took out a reservation on Coel Reservation Service? Yes, so that's on the next page as an item that was completed. Can you finish the entry? Yes, so the other item is the interior pain, and like how and all of you mentioned, the maintenance schedule needs to happen. And what happened in previous years was building maintenance was handled by each of the departments. Now it's all handled by Public Works. So in order to create that maintenance schedule, we need to have the conversation with Public Works to create what that would look like. So that's something that I'm currently working on right now. Any questions? So that's what it was slated for the capital improvements list, but hopefully we can just take that off outright. Moving into the maintenance schedule. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. 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 I think another thing that we talked about is if it becomes a library budget item. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if the library becomes responsible for paying for that interior painting, that we put a line item mm -hmm. in the budget and like put a few thousand dollars a year to do one part of the library instead of painting the whole interior mm -hmm. all at once as a project. Right. Okay. Any other questions? No, I, I, I like the employee's idea because we really don't differentiate cell. Not every room is damaging the same time. Right. You know, we use the same time. Right. So we like the them. young adult. Right. Yeah. 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 Those <laughs> young adults. <laughs> right. yeah. Some, some area. Mm -hmm. they have all and then on the back page, there was no changes onto those because right now the, and the focus is just revising the ones for next year. Yeah. And then that last page, um, the Crow Library Reservation Server was identified as completed, so I just marked that off and then just keeping on this document so we can see our progress. So the capital improvement presentation goes March 27th right. to the board. So when are we going to see? the revised list of what you're proposing to the city. Yes, because we wouldn't have a, mm, well, we have that March 23rd meeting. Monday, March 24th? No, 23rd. Is it the 23rd? 23rd, okay. So we could see it. Well, you all can see it then. Except for, or we would could, you like, Or would you like to call here's, it? Here's the thing. Um, so you meet, uh, the city council meets this Friday the 28th. The agenda for that meeting was posted last Friday the 21st. So our agenda was posted, the city council agenda was posted, and we, if your request to the city council will be posted in public before we've seen it. Hmm, okay. How would you want to proceed then? Do you want me to simply um, email an updated list? I, that would be great so that we could see it. And, okay. and, but we already had saved March 11th to meet with the city council. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Could we meet on March 11th for half an hour um, to go over that so that we could I think you have to go before the council with something approved by the library board. Mm -hmm. We, we, I, you want to do it in the afternoon then, during the I'm time when we would have otherwise met with the council? Because it, it would have been on. 5 o'clock on, on 5 p.m. <laughs> as opposed <laughs> to a.m. <laughs> um, on March 11th. March 11th. Yeah. Our next board meeting is March 23rd. Right. right. Um, which is 8.30, and then the, the, the capital improvement plan presentation is on March 27th. But, Mary, uh, so uh, you know how Jennifer sends us our packet yeah. on Friday? Oh, yeah. That's when the city council gets their packet for the Friday meeting, too. Oh, oh. So it will already be posted and public Got it. before Got it. we would have a chance to respond to that list. Got it. So when do they get the package? That's another, a word. Another thing we could do, I don't know how you guys feel about it, is to send Irene and 
Robert forward with this is what the list should be, mm -hmm. and then you forward it to us. But when we've done that, the other, when we've given some instruction or asked for some things, like in the minutes from the last meeting, what I asked for hasn't been done, not because of you, but because other things happened within the city people, staff, telling you other things. So that concerns me. Okay. I want to echo that. Why is this, we're talking about these items where this is from last year's budget. It should have been done the moment the budget is approved, right? Because we're allowed to spend the money already. So I think some of it was started. I know the canopy was started by Chris, but remember we've had some um, changes in staff. Uh, and we had a reorganization of the, what do you call that? Management yes. staff? Mm -hmm. Seniors, to, what do you call them, Amanda? Executive team staff. Executive team staff, too. Oh, executive team staff. So okay, that's the reason. I think, they... but I think we've made that clear that moving forward, we want these firmer costs. Yeah. I agree. So I how, just, would, would it be possible then for, I mean, we, just as long as we would have a quorum uh, to meet on March 11th? at five o'clock, say, here in this room, mm -hmm. um, to take a look at that. Do you have a motion? I'm, I'm, I, I'd just kind of like to yeah. see, yeah. Is, that, is that something, because we, it has been on our calendar, so I'm assuming that everybody sure. has that time blocked out. I can do it. I can. Uh, let me see. I am flying back from Pentagonia. I just need to see what time I come home. Come on the 11th. Yeah, 11th of yes. March. Yeah, if we would have been doing but, uh, the city council just 5 o'clock here. 5 o'clock here, sure. Okay, I'd like to uh, propose a motion then, uh, because I think it looks like we we could can have a quorum. I'd like to propose a motion that we have a special meeting at 5 p.m. on March 11th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. So that'll love, give us a chance. Uh, it shouldn't be too long. I what time? Five o'clock. It's not going to be here now. Yeah. Do we have to um, say to post the agenda? Okay. And do we have to say that now, or is that understood? It's understood. Okay. It's, I think it's yeah. understood. As a special meeting, it'll be posted at mm -hmm. least 24 hours before. And right now, there's only one agenda item, but we haven't gotten to the budget yet. Right. So, um, <laughs> and the one agenda item would be um, to prepare a capital priority, sorry, to prepare the capital improvement and capital equipment requests that are going to go forward to the city council mm -hmm. for requesting funding for 2021. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect you to get funding for the bottle watering station or those things that may not help. Right. Okay. So we just need to get ready for how many items? Just all the Well, let's put, I don't. Uh, right? I mean, so now we need to understand each other. How many items do we need to get ready for? I think it's, I'm, the first I, eight. Eight. I'm looking at this as the entry canopy is underway. You're with the RFP out and, and you're getting bids on the BART AV. The public use computer replacement is kind of underway. Window tinting may be absorbed by public works. So we're really looking at the one big ticket item to go before city council at the security camera system as number one. Number yeah. two, you think you're writing the grant for the young adult furniture? Does mm -hmm. that also need to go on a capital list for city council? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, think so. you would need. If you get the grant money, we would just do the typical appropriation of funds and then just accept the donation, and it would be it would happen at any okay. time. Well, and great. What yeah. about the architectural fee for the computer room mm -hmm. renovation? That's what we're discussing, and I need to figure out how much that would be. So would that be second? 
Security number one, computer room renovation. Mm -hmm. and, and the interior painting, we decided to let the public work absorb it. Is that how it We're is? asking them. Or right. as a maintenance, mm -hmm. right? As a maintenance budget. Right. That would probably be well presented as part of a number of items as opposed to just separating out the interior painting. These are the items that we would like to see permanently moved to the city, including interior painting. That would be my suggestion, rather than piecemealing to them as you come across, oh, how about adding this back to, as Hal was suggesting, do your study. So we're not recommending interior painting for our capital improvement list. The server's already done, and we're going to hold on the bottle watering. Why is it called bottle watering? The news and information monitors are. Why did didn't you put two up? Them? Yeah, we've got two yeah. up. And then there are the these additional. Projector for this room is not going to be on the list. So it's really this going forward with the security cameras to the city council, is that it? No, I think we should be more, no? I mean, some of the money is this year and next year we could talk about it, so. But Mary, we're trying, we have to tell them now what money we'd like for that next year. Well, not now, like today, but yeah. now in this part of the budget process. Oh, I like it all the way down the list today. <laughs> it's up to me. You ask me. Yes, I want it all the you. way here. Why should I settle for less? Why? Why would I ask everything I want? Does this so, need to stay? Why? Why would we, we want? Why, why, why no. would we work patiently for no. next year? All the water so, and all that would just it ask should be this year. it should be listed as yeah. completed yeah. then, right? Maybe so, you get it. You know. What do you think? Should, what are you talking about? I mean, it's not down there. The that news and information monitors. Yeah. And we have the foundation <laughs> Ready to serve. Ready well, to serve. Right. Those are not really that expensive. Either. I think the bottom <laughs> station at five thousand yeah, is be. a good estimate. Mm -hmm. Continues to be a good estimate. The news and information monitors. I think they. There, that should be com listed as completed. Is that correct? I mean? That's what. Yes. Yeah. That one's done. That's completed. Really completed. Huh? Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we have the wish list. Some people saw the wish list, right? And the Thornton conference room projector. Yeah, this room. We're using it. Why is it not priority? We're, we should only ourselves have a very nice facility. Well, the direction was for staff to identify their priorities, oh, and then okay. this was not identified it's on not that. Identified. Yeah. Well, is it possible if we do we will increase the rental rate? Because the rental rate on this room is down like 30 or 50 percent compared year to date, compared with uh, last year. So I know that they are currently doing the fee study and revise it, and you're going to see if we need to increase the cost that we charge for rentals. I'm not sure if this would be part of that conversation. Well, but the rental rate for this room has been down for, for year to date. Here is. Um, yeah, the sorting room, conference room, yesterday, uh, compared with that, is down is 26%. Oh, that's 78%. We can look at that under yeah. statistics, Mary. Right, right. Um, let's... Uh, so you think the bottle watering station and the Thornton conference room projector should also go before the city council? Why not? I mean, why not? If the worst is to be rejected. That's and you might have put in the pool. I don't know, what do you think? I think the water station should not wait because water is an issue with every person who visits the library. They, re they really have an, an improvement to their quality of life. Yeah. Because a lot of times people don't want to go out and buy, budget, buy, buy bottle of water and they just don't drink, which is terrible for the full season. They really need to really have a little water extra to really improve the immunity. So I think that we should add so that in. Let's put the bottle of watering what? station as number two on the list. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that I'm, I'm recommending that. It's indication of San Marino pay great attention to the public's health. Yeah, particularly right now with the coronavirus, one of the best immune systems. Okay, let's, we've got uh, we've got some time constraints here, so let's try and stick just uh, yeah. to the information that we have in front of us. Um, 
I, I think that it's not a problem if we put all of these items on, on the list for city council. The you know, worst case scenario, they say no. So can you, so can let's you just, recap uh, what the items are? Or Robert, can you recap what, you, what the items are before we move on? So what, are you talking in the plan what in general or just for next year? What you're going to present. So let's see, let me get the words right. The capital improvement plan presentation for March 27th, detailed discussion with council related to the CIP. Draft operational budgets have been shared with appropriate commissions or boards for feedback. So what are you going to give them that day for the library? So if we are successful, what we're going to propose is the security county system is one. We will re, uh, bring forward the architectural review for the computer room renovations. And then we'll also have the conversation moving up the bottle watering station. I don't understand um, if we're successful in our conversation. Who else do you have to talk to? Michael Throne, because he helps create the capital improvement. Well, to clarify, I mean, this can come from you as your proposal, and that's what the library board's proposal is. Um, but like Robert said, the capital improvement budget is really a citywide budget. So Michael then works with the city manager, and they do a reassessment of understanding our budget limitations citywide what they're recommending to council. So it doesn't mean like it wouldn't stay in as the board's recommendation and it could be a disagreement, it could not be, they could agree with it. But there's just that step, I don't want to make it seem like it didn't get there like it should have. There just may be a reordering by uh, these. Well, I teams. think we just want it clear right, when it comes say, from us yep, what exactly. our priorities are. And exactly. then we, we understand the cities might change that. Yep. But they need to know that we say number one, this is number one Completely. and this is number two. Right. Okay. So could you update this priority list and indicate maybe in one of these columns or somewhere that the security camera system is our number one? The ar architectural design or any costs for that for the computer room renovation are number two. And I would go as far as to say any costs associated with drafting a plan with final actual numbers for the computer lab renovation mm -hmm. so we can really shop it around. Mm -hmm. And then number three is the bottle watering station. And I think the bottle watering station was number four on the staff's list. Mm -hmm. And number two on their list was um, per the young adult area, which is why Irene is going to write that grant. So can you revise this and email us with any comments from Michael Throne before we meet on March 11th? Sure. Even like March 10th. Would Maybe be okay. you can yeah. join us on March the, uh, the meeting. Can you join us? It um, might be to be determined just in terms since we have a council meeting at 6, there may be a closed session he's involved. It just depends. <coughs> we can ask him. Well, if he can't, I, I can see why he couldn't come on March 11th if he has to meet with the city council because, you know, they're important. And, <laughs> you just never know. But he might then not, could he come to our um, regularly scheduled March meeting at 830? See why not? I can one of us can follow If anything, you might send Dean. You should yeah. Thank you, Amanda. You tell. <laughs> okay. Are we uh, are we done then with capital improvement? Yes. We move on to public. Computer replacement. Yes, so I am aggressively following uh, Intellisys to finalize the bid specifications for the computer lab replacement. Once we have that, and I wrote notes here. Um, this will simply be a procurement by the code, and so it'll simply require council approval since it's anticipated to be greater than 30 grand. And what I'm trying to the foundation, well, Cindy Chan from the foundation had conveyed to me that the foundation would like to present this during National Library Week. That falls on the week of April 19th. That Friday is a council meeting, but it's slated for the CIP presentation. So I'm confirming if then this, if we are able to get the bids back on time, if this will have to go to the April 8th. Wednesday meeting, or if this will have to be pushed to the May 13th meeting. Preferably, it would I want to get it for the April May, April 8th meeting, 
again, I still need to get the bid specifications back, and then from there we can create the timeline on when we are able to get everything churned. Okay, there is an April 8 meeting added because on my last list it's only April 24. I didn't see any April. No, the, so this, this is, is city council. This this is, mm -hmm. Or, but this is just for the budget. Yeah. So the April 8 meeting still exists, it's just not a budget oh, specific right. meeting. Do I have any questions? Oh, so the range of costs, that was also updated because of the conversation is that right now we have separate machines, separate towers and monitors at each station. What Intelsys has conveyed to me is that we may use thin clients, so we may just get one massive powerful server and then smaller monitors, and so it'll be a much less expense to maintain, so if one machine breaks, we don't have to pay for a whole new computer set. It'll just be replace that whatever that thin client is, and then just make sure that the server, the main server, is well up to date. And it'll also ensure that every other station will be the same power, same specs, same programs, etc. And Telesis again is waiting to give me the comparisons of which would be the better option to go. Are all of the safety features and filters? protecting the public or protecting the library still in place mm -hmm. in that yes. configuration. Right, and that's the other thing is that if we buy separate computers, if one breaks down, we have to get the whole software back on it. If we have the thin clients, it'll be much easier to maintain. Yeah. Yeah. So that conversation's where I'm at right now. So hopefully I have something to use. Okay. Okay. Uh, work with city. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, are there any questions on the public access computers? No. 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 Financial budget report. All right, so you all have in your packet the budget monitor for this fiscal year as well as the month of January. Thus far, there haven't been any um, Thank you. outlandish changes. However, we did sign the new MOU, so there will be increases on personnel costs and it may exceed what was budgeted. So I'm waiting to, it. those changes will most likely reflect on the February, well, the next budget monitor. And then this will also impact the planning for 2021 because all those personnel expenditures are gonna go up as well as that, the retirement benefits, et cetera, things like that. When, what, when does that hit the budget? When do they experience the raises and so forth. So this pat we just got paid on Friday and that was when we got the raises. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. 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 That's good. I did. Yeah. Yeah. So if uh, how do we uh, how do we absorb that for the rest of the year? That's a great question and that's Thank a conversation you. I need to have with Josette to figure out what's going to happen. And then the and then yeah, it'll just in Packed the planning for 2021, and then finance will come back to us and tell us what that actually. I believe like. it's something you have to worry about. I think council reappropriated funds mm -hmm. when they passed the MLUs, so it's just part oh, of. Oh, thank you. It was <laughs> quite a hefty amount, and we yeah. felt that was the way we needed to retain and keep our employees. Thank you. Yeah. Did you get my yoga mm -hmm. room? Pardon me? Did you give them my yoga room? Not this time. <laughs> so then. Yes. Um, one item, however, that has become a little bit of concern is the revenue for the library. So what I looked at the passport revenue, it's been low. Um, and as a result of that, it based if we go on the current same rate as what it's been going at, we're going to be short you know, a few thousand, tens of thousands of dollars by the end of the fiscal year. Another thing that may be impacting it is the coronavirus. People are traveling less. Mm. And as a result of this, we are adjusting our estimates for next fiscal year. Um, so we are exploring other options of where the library may be able to obtain revenue. One of the conversations has been, it may be that we start charging for certain programs, but the library is reluctant to because it doesn't, that's not the mentality, but that is one of the options that we may have to explore if the passport revenue continues to drop. I remember last yeah, year we upheld our budget because our own passport. Right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So what does that mean in, in, in what the council is going to see in the budget? Um, maybe the, uh, are we going to be, be reduced to reduce our budget?
budget or cut our budget because of the income on passport income? We don't know yet. And those are conversations again that I'm having with Irene and Josette to figure out what the next year's budget's gonna look like. So Irene and Josette and I met last week to figure out at least some preliminary expenditures for next fiscal year, and then I'm coming back doing a little bit more of the revenue estimates, whatever information I get back from finance to for the personnel. The other item that we are considering is an additional part-timer because we want about a third of their time to be focused solely on communications because what we've noticed is from the conversations from the Blue Ribbon Committee, the Rec Commission, and the community meetings is that the paper copy of the library guide, I'm sorry, the community services guide is not being used quite effectively as we would like it to be. Um, if you don't have young children at home, you're pretty much just gonna always toss it. And if it yeah. doesn't really mm -hmm. catch your attention, you're not gonna get the information that you need. So what we would like is to really modernize our communication methods. Hopefully we can get our wish list from the city council. And this person would be devoted to communication about a third of their time. The other two thirds of their time, what we are saying, um, what Irene also mentioned, was that they would work closely with Jeff on fines. So uh, what we were able to look back on the history is there's a large number of uncollected overdue fines and that needs to potentially be a source of revenue for the library. And this person hopefully would be able to be devoted to that area. Have, have, okay. have we thought about using a robot for general communication? They never break down, you know? They don't get sickly and they don't need to be much trained. They are program once and they go, you know? Have we thought about that? I know some of the airport use that for information. I don't know what I mean. I think they mean like, Blast it out to the homes. Mm -hmm. Oh, then you blast it out. I thought you were yeah. in the library where you will get a lot of interest. Everyone will come and talk to the robot. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. that's, that's true. Yeah. That's yeah. Expensive. Probably not. But yeah. um, the other thing that we would also that was also mentioned is that what we've been doing is we think that when we put it on paper and we send it out to the community, the community receives it. Well, no. It's usually a lot of word of mouth. So yes. potentially this individual could collaborate with community liaisons, so people from the PTAs, people from Chinese Club, other key organizations that can really ensure that whatever community services puts out there is heard and received well. I, I actually have thought about that. In the PTA where I serve, the PTA always have a PTA chair and they install a lot of chairs to just work on communication and work on different programs, which is free. If we, our library would be interested in having, adopting a, like a liaison system where, where it's a lot more powerful than a pay staff. But I think that they've gotten away from that, Mary, and they actually just um, hired I forget her exact title, but she is a community services information person. Her name is Amber at the school district offices uh -huh. because they don't want just anybody posting on their Facebook account or posting on their Twitter or Instagram because who knows what's on those kids. But, um, also so I do think, and um, that just sounds fabulous because that was one of the findings, as you said, in the um, Green Play mm -hmm. um, recommendation. And I know that was the rec department study, but it did talk about a lot of other services in the city mm -hmm. as well. Right. And so those are things that we are taking into consideration. And then we are also, of course, going to be proposing new programs, activities, and however those costs, once we are able to finalize that, that will also be put into the budget for next fiscal year. Okay. I think that sounds yeah. great. And I think on that rec services brochure, I do read it, but I'm checking up on what's in there for the library. Right. <laughs> but yeah. I'll tell you, if you could tell whoever publishes that, they should use um, new photographs. They're using old photos, and I know this because I know the children in those photos. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think that it would be better, oh, you know, this is new, or this is from an event that recently occurred, or an event you're trying to promote. Um, and I think the library does a good job, like there are really cute pictures of Tara and balloons and mm -hmm. science stuff on the website. I think that's the kind of thing people want to see. How about e-copy? It's an e-copy. E-copy is also available. Now we have it, the library, the yeah. uh, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. get it on the, um, City website. Oh, I see. But they don't need blast to everybody. Mm -hmm. oh. 
No, we don't, and we're exploring those options as well. So one of the options that we are looking into is fully upgrading our recreation management software, and one of the options that we looked at is just simply upgrading our current RecTract software, or potentially, again, with the blessing of city council, if we can acquire a more expensive set of machines, well, not machines, but uh, programs, that have the capability for text updates or blasts and things like that. Because right now how it's been is we kind of piggyback off of the school district. So yeah. we'll send them information and they blast it, but we only have a small section. So we want to make sure that whatever, again, this part-timer can help us really expand those efforts. Is it really that it's all sounds like it has to be a computer yeah. Yeah. Do you have no, anything I mean, else on uh, no. budget? No. Okay, let's move on to City Librarian's report. Hello, everybody. The Friends of the Library met last week, but they didn't have a quorum, so we don't have proof minutes. They're planning to have a picnic on the patio on March 31st at 6 in the evening. March 3 1. March 3 1. And there will be musicians from the junior high school and also a talk by Dr. Tom Mason. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, so just just a little talk, one talk. And when was that, March 31st? 31st, six right. o'clock. Mm -hmm. Six o'clock. See you there, yes. And there's a charge, it's like $20 to pay Are for they, the food. Are they providing food? Yeah. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. You don't have that's to make my picnic. <laughs> yeah. Just get there. Uh, moving on to the foundations, you have their minutes. And as Hal was saying, they are thinking about having a boutique, a holiday boutique in November or December. They haven't gotten very far in their planning yet, but it's there. Moving on to operations, we still have not found a librarian one part-time. I'm going to do a push to try to get it out to the library schools and etc. cetera. Um, we have news from Rebecca Russell. She is expecting a child. Mm. She's ah. pregnant. Yeah, so she's due in she's August. Oh. And I also just got a call from her. She's out with a terrible cold and so is Tara. Oh. That cold oh is going God. around. It's not good. Wow. So that's the staffing situation. We can look at the statistics on page 16. And once again, we see the disappointing news that print circulation is down uh, altogether 5% for all those uh, segments. Looking farther down, we see isn't that... Isn't that something that we expect? Yeah, at this point. Well, that, yeah, yeah. At this point. And we can see that the e-book downloads have gone up 14%. Yeah. So that's, that's where that's going. Uh, somebody accidentally used the Encyclopedia Britannica online, so we, that's 192% uh, jump. <laughs> <laughs> the Gale databases are up slightly, but it reads as 350%. Um, so, even just a little bit of use on these databases uh, is very, very apparent. Moving on to page 17, we do not have a, a statistic for computer logins because we didn't get it in time, but it will be on the next one. Um, library cards are about the same, and then we have uh, processed materials. Are there any questions on the statistics? No. All right. Moving on. Um, programming and services, a report on the library and recreation training. On, on February 14th, which was a Friday, we closed in the morning to have a joint session with recreation where we uh, brainstormed ideas for programs that we could do together. And among those programs was uh, a walk, a story walk which there'll be a story on 14 boards in the Lacey Park where kids can go along and read the story as they walk. That was Rebecca's idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another idea was to have uh, ESL classes for Chinese speakers, that kind of thing. Because we as a library do not charge for programs and the Recreation Department does, uh, the solution we came up with is that we would have a free introductory class at the library and if you wanted to continue, you could pay for a class at REC. Mm -hmm. So that way we'd use both of our models mm -hmm. for that. And we can call, call that yeah. the Chinese club. They would love that. Oh yeah, they, they already do you know, put on programs every month here in the library. We're grateful to them for that. 
Finally, uh, technology and marketing, RFID is complete. Mm. Yeah. It's 18 months, but it's done, and we have self-checkout, and people love it. So once again, thanks to the foundation and to the friends for funding yeah. that. Mm. And thank, thank you to our trustee, Eldon, here, and who yeah, would Eldon help so much with that, too. Yeah. 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 Nice to have somebody who knows what's going on in the group. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And that completes my RFID report. All right. Um, is there any additional business? I would like to um, have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all for a very productive meeting. Yes. I've checked out things here and used the RFID. Yeah. Uh, I haven't used. 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 Yeah. Uh,